Hey bitches, welcome back to another episode of Confessionals. Today's episode is going to be about something that I am um, I have strong opinions about. Today's episode is titled You are not an empath. You are just the people pleaser. And I am deeply deeply passionate about this because I see so many people priding themselves on how empathetic they are and how they feel all of these emotions and blah blah blah. First of all, I don't know. I kind of have an issue with people finding some sort of like self-righteousness and empathy because I don't know, it just looks performative. But I will have to admit that once upon a time, I considered myself, I was one of these people. And I considered myself a huge empath and that I just took in all the emotions and I was just available for everybody to walk all over and to, I would just wanted to help people, right? And I still do, but I was confusing people pleasing with empathy. And today I'm going to talk about how most people are just undercover people pleasers, that they actually lack a lot of empathy because empathy takes emotional intelligence and empathy takes self-love to some extent. But I do believe that a necessary component to truly altruistic empathy is self-love because you can't really properly love other people until you know how to love yourself and how to have boundaries and how to put yourself first and do it without thinking that there's virtue and self-sacrifice. But yes, in this episode, I'm going to talk about the difference between empathy and people-pleasing, where it comes from. I'm going to dive a little bit into parentification and hyper self-awareness. I'm also going to talk about glorified self-abandonment because I know for me in my childhood, I didn't really receive a lot of praise unless it was unless it had to do with me making some sort of sacrifice, even very young, like five years old. I'm going to talk about virtue signaling and managing egos. And I'm going to conclude with talking about how people pleasers make the worst friends and a little bit into my experiences with that. But without further ado, let's get this episode started. How are people pleasers formed? Just like anything, just like any sort of mental health problem or issue, I really do believe that it's all formed in childhood. And I think there are several things that make a people pleaser, but one of them is growing up on edge. Because when you're a child and you are on constantly on edge because somebody in the family might blow up, might get super angry, when there's an emotionally immature parent or parents around as a child you're just trying to survive right and when that happens you're just so hyper aware of your surroundings like there's absolutely no safety anywhere that you go because your primary caregivers are keeping you on edge right so when this happens you are hyper aware of everybody's emotions their facial expressions, their movements, their words. And if somebody if, is acting off or somebody seem, seems to, you know, if something seems to go wrong or a direction that you don't want it to go, even at a really young age, you're going to try and manage that. And you're going to, because you're just trying to survive, you're going to try and diminish the the threat, right? So for example, if you have a father with anger issues and you're at a dinner table and somebody makes a comment that rubs your father the wrong way, you you cannot, you start reading his facial expressions, right? Because you're hyper aware and you know how what it takes to get him angry. So you already start to see his facial expressions changing. So what you do, you know, if you're an older child, if you have the capacity to do this, is you change the subject or you try and say something that's going to please the dad or you may just leave, right? But you're going to try and do something that is going to lessen the threat. And more often than not, the things we try to do as kids is just please. Please, please, please the people that are 
creating harm. Another issue that comes hand to hand with this is parentification. A lot of kids that grow up with volatile parents or emotionally immature parents are conditioned to take care of the parent or take care of their younger siblings. And it is often ingrained in them that their main source of value is to create peace and to create a stable environment and to take care of things, even though that is a parent's job. And what happens with this is that I think involuntarily, a lot of kids grow up to become self-righteous without any self-worth because they've been taught as children that they're main or only source of value is what they can do for others or how they can manage a chaotic situation and I think just as a society we like to praise people that sacrifice themselves for a cause or for other people or oftentimes with religion self-sacrifice and self-abandonment is highly highly praised so if you were raised in this environment where you're being parentified plus a religious environment, you can develop this self-righteous attitude of, I do so much for others, I take care of so many people, and people don't do the same for me, they don't, you know, they mistreat me, whatever. And the thing about this is that it is true, but all it is is just a cycle that has started very early on from childhood that is, you grow up to take care of people that are not taking care of you. You're not taught to take care of people that like you or that love you or that are doing the same for you. No, you are taught to take care of people that cannot take care of themselves and that will only use you because that is what your parents did. So when you grow into adulthood and you do this and you don't get anything in return, you're left feeling empty and used, but you don't understand why it's happening. Like you think that it's just the world around you that is evil and that you know that you're not worth anything and that's why people are not taking care of you but yeah I think it it takes a lot of self-awareness to realize that it is just a behavior a conditioned behavior in my own childhood this has been very true and there might be some projecting in the things I'm talking about but I do think they generally apply to people um As a child, I was never praised. In fact, I was always like beaten down, called stupid, and yeah. I had a really neurotic mother that just had no patience at all. Like if I dropped a fork, it was the end of the world. And it was a beating or a pinching or some sort of violence inflicted on me just because I dropped a fork. So imagine when I made a bigger mistake, when I didn't understand my math homework, or if I responded and if I talked back, quote unquote, talked back when I just asked a question, or if I was asking for attention and I wasn't getting it and then I became fussy, like that was our, like everything, there was nothing I did as a child that was right. Like everything had a negative consequence. The only things that I remember being of value when I was a kid was making people laugh uh, or sacrificing myself. And with the first one, making people laugh, like if I did something that was funny and others laughed, my mom would praise me. She'd be like, oh, yeah, she's so funny. Ha ha ha. Look at her. She's so cute. And that was like, I received attention at that. So like if I was being a source of entertainment for the people around my mother, then that was good, right? And people would talk about it, and my or my dad would talk about it, and my mom would talk about it. So I, I noticed that, right? Making people laugh, I got value from that. And then second was sacrificing myself. So when my little brother was born, he got really he was really sick. And he had, I don't know, this jaundice. Yeah, he had jaundice. And I had jaundice as a baby too, but he had it really bad. And he was in the hot he was hospitalized for days. And I remember like not ever whining about it because I understood that he was really sick. And even though I was only five, I just, you know, I was told like, hey, he's very sick. Just please, you know, 
be calm, be patient. We can't really pay a lot of attention to you right now. Like my mom couldn't really be with me because she had to take care of him. So my aunts were taking care of me. And yeah, it didn't really cause any trouble. Like I didn't really think anything of it. But I was so praised for that. Like the fact that I didn't cause any issues. Like that was a huge, like I, I, I was praised for it. And my mom was telling everybody how good of a kid I was because I didn't create a fuss or anything. Or also like before my brother was born, when my grandpa was really sick, he was pretty much on his deathbed. I didn't, never complained, never, even though my mom didn't pay any attention to me. Um, yeah, I never complained because I saw how sick, I mean, I was only four, but it just, I just understood, right? But even if I hadn't, like, this is the thing now is that even if I had cried or begged for attention or didn't really understand why I needed to be calm, like, that would have been okay too because I was a baby. Like, I was just a little kid. Like, they expected me to understand these really tough, adult situations and I did and I got praise from it but I can only like now I think I'm like what if I hadn't what if I had cried what if I had whined what what would have been the outcome of that and I think there would have been some extreme consequences for me if I hadn't understood those adult situations as a child and yeah like my parents got divorced my mom got remarried and then divorced again and that was a, I'm not gonna, I'm going so much into my life right now, but um, yeah, there was a lot of chaos. And every time that I handled it well, even when I became an adult, it was praise. That was the only thing I was ever praised for. And also for therapizing my dad or my mom. Like even with my dad, I remember being 13 to like 15 years old and I never really had a relationship with him because he, you know, he was just an absent father. And during my teenage years, I would spend the weekends with him. My brother and I would spend the weekends with him. And my dad and I would stay up until like five, six in the morning talking. Well, not really talking. He would be talking and I would just be listening. And he would be reminiscing on his life, telling me about his childhood, just talking, 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 like obviously telling me things that he as a child was never able to to say right? Like he himself was in a therapy session, but he was in a therapy session with his 13-year-old daughter and the 13-year-old daughter was the therapist, right? So me at that age, I confused that for connection and I thought that I just felt so loved by my father, even though he never even asked me a single question about myself or how I was doing. Like, the whole conversation revolved around how, you know, like, things about my mom, because he was obviously, like, still in love with my mom, and things about his childhood. And that's it. Like, like that's all the conversation was about, and I thought that that was love. And I was getting it, some sort of attention from it. So now it just kind of makes sense how receiving, like, not receiving anything as a child and receiving crumbs for self-sacrifice. Like now it makes sense how in adulthood I got into toxic friendships and a toxic relationship because I was just so used to giving, giving, giving and receiving very little. So to some extent, I do have a lot of empathy for for people who are people pleasers because you are just you're conditioned to love the people that don't love you and that mistreat you and you can't see anything else because you're constantly in a state of trying to earn love so to some extent I get it and I do feel for the people pleasers because I used to be one and it's just functioning out of trauma like that's really as simple as it is but as an adult it is important to grow out of that and to wake the fuck up and realize that when you are operating in these toxic cycles that you were conditioned into, like the only thing that that creates is you sabotaging the good people in your life. Just because you were conditioned to pour into those that are not pouring into you doesn't mean that it's okay to continue that. Like it's just absolutely not. 
and it, it harms you and it harms the people around you that are actually trying to love you. So that is something that I had to come to terms with. And even though I had a lot of empathy for the people in a similar situation, that just led to like the the thing about being a people pleaser is that you can become friends with another people pleaser, but the one that ple- that is trying to please the most is going to be the one that comes out losing because when you are pleasing your people pleasing your other people pleasing friend and you're going you're going overboard because of their conditioning as well, they're going to neglect you and try and super people please another person that is not pouring into them as much. So it's just all a cycle of overdoing for those that are going to neglect you. And it's just, it doesn't end well. It doesn't end well and never does. What makes this so easy to confuse with empathy is that you are actively trying to read into other people's emotions and their moods. With empathy, I don't I think it's kind of effortless when you feel for somebody else. It's just it just happens. But I think with people pleasing is like there's a there's a hyper awareness to it and you are you are trying to fill a void or fill a gap and see what you can do and how you can be of service. And when you do something good for somebody, I think it always makes you feel good for the most part. You know, it's always good to do good things for people. But uh, this can blow people's ego a lot. The amount of people, pleasers that I see that are also so full of themselves, but at the same time, incredibly insecure. Like, I wouldn't be lying if, if I said it's all of them. Like, all of the people, pleasers that I've met, including myself back in the day, I had such a big self-righteous ego because I just did so much for people. And I just... I just, you know, I feel other people's pain or whatever, but then I am a victim as well because nobody does the same for me, right? But it's just because it's not empathy because I have no vetting process. Like I'm just trying to serve and I'm becoming self-righteous in my act of service because it's not genuine. It is not intentional. It is not because I'm actually feeling for the person. It is because I feel good when I do something, when I'm useful. And that's how I think subconsciously that I earn love, right? It's, it gets confusing. It gets confusing because with empathy, you do, and with being a people pleaser, you feel things. Like a lot of the emotions are the same, but the intentions aren't. The intentions are absolutely, absolutely not the same. I also feel like one of the biggest differences between empathy and people pleasing is conflict avoidance. People pleasers are ruled by conflict avoidance because when you are conditioned to be to be a people pleaser, you have to read into your environment. Like everything has to be has to stay at peace, right? So even though you may be trying to make another person feel better, even if you feel bad for them because they're going through something, you're trying to control an environment. You're trying to do an act with the objective of not having something blow up, right? Whereas when you have empathy, the objective is completely different. Like you are actually focused on the reason that you're being empathetic for. Like it's not about avoiding conflict. And it's not about doing some sort of performance or some sort of, of, or being of service, right? When you are truly empathetic, you, it it kind of comes natural and you might even create conflict. Like conflict might be necessary. I think every outcome when you're operating from genuine empathy is different depending on the circumstance. The thing with people pleasing is that even though it is a survival mechanism that might have been extremely useful and life-saving in childhood. Once you're an adult, it is inherently selfish. It is selfish as fuck to continue to be a people pleaser and trying to make it your objective to be liked and avoid conflict. And even if you do feel for some people and you try and help and you do try to do these acts of service, if you're not operating off of true empathy and you're operating off of people pleasing instead it's never going to be genuine it is always going to be selfish always 100 percent. 
Another key difference with empathy versus people pleasing is that even though you may be doing acts of service in both, when you have true genuine empathy, there is a strong regard for self and having boundaries and respecting other people's boundaries. Like I personally, like now, I would not go over the top and helping somebody if it involved crossing my own boundaries or somebody else's boundaries or if it was out of pure pure self-sacrifice like only if it was really worth it to make a sacrifice then I would step in but I'm always gonna regard myself before I do an act of service thoughtlessly like empathy I think I would it starts with an emotion right like it starts like you feel for somebody but when it's genuine you take all these other things into consideration as well like you don't just do it I think when you are people pleasing you even though you it may start with an emotion as well like you're either distraught by somebody else's stress or the environment like you know you're just you're operating kind of off of emotions whereas with empathy it starts with an emotion but it doesn't end with one I think with empathy as well there's a lot of discernment going on um even though there might be a lot of passion that comes through, like if you hear of a situation that makes you really upset and really sad, if you're going to make an action and you love yourself and you have boundaries, you're going to try and read out the situation. You're going to evaluate. There's going to be a little bit more thought. And I think there's a lot of ego control as well because with true empathy, you don't really think about how you're going to be praised or how you're going to be perceived you just simply feel for the other person and you either feel bad or feel good or feel whatever the case may be with with their situation right like you may feel really good that they're doing well so you celebrate like there's even though there is a consideration of self you are not self-centered and like that is that's the thing like I think it's really cool that when you love yourself and you consider yourself in situations you tend to be the least selfish considering yourself and loving yourself first is the key to lack of selfishness because the motives are completely completely different and you understand that in order to properly evaluate a situation and take care of other people you must take care of yourself first whereas when you're a people pleaser you are disregarding yourself and you're just mindlessly trying to take care of everything in all these situations and it's a survival mechanism so you're just trying to you know bring make the vibes better or be liked like the motives are completely completely different it is really important to draw these lines and to differentiate between these two Ego control is so important because, damn, like I see so many friends, like old friends and people I know now that are just fueled by ego. And ego blinds you. Like, you really, ego is the enemy of self awareness, really. And ego is a survival mechanism. So it kind of makes sense, right? It kind of makes sense why a lot of people pleasers have a huge, huge ego. And, you know, it's just a way of protecting yourself. And I feel for that. I feel for that. But yeah, it's so harmful. So harmful in so many ways. And the person that comes out losing the most is a people pleaser themselves. It's taken me years to realize this. I mean, I've had my own people pleasing tendencies. I've neglected people that were good for me. Like back in my early 20s when I was dating I came across healthy guys that I just was completely neglecting because I was stuck in these toxic cycles and I was trying to earn love from guys that didn't give a fuck about me. So I didn't realize it then, but eventually I did realize that I was a people pleaser because I was just trying to manage chaos. And like when it came to pleasing my family or my ex, these were people that were like, would inflict violence right so I don't know it's just I was just conditioned to keep anything from escalating and that's what kind of makes me you know feel for them because I've been there but yeah I mean there has to be a point where you have to wake up 
because even though you're not responsible for your for the things that were done to you, you are responsible for your own healing. And being a people pleaser makes you a bad friend, makes you so, so unreliable because your values and your priorities are completely different. They are shifted into, you know, prioritizing your ego, being liked, maintaining vibes, like a certain environment, preventing chaos or conflict. And I know I've had a lot of friends that have been people pleasers and those bitches are the most unloyal people I've ever met. They're also fake as fuck because they just want to avoid conflict, but they will do anything to avoid conflict and to be liked. Like they are just so scared of being shunned and not being liked. And again, I feel for them. Like, there's a part of me that feels for them and I feel a little sad. But then there's also a part that I'm just like, yeah, no. Like, uh, this is not okay. Like, as an adult, grow the fuck up and get over it. And I know that's harsh. But people have to take responsibility for their lives. Like, they just do. One thing that I've had to learn as well is that sometimes conflict and confrontation is needed in friendships. A good friend will always tell you the truth. And it may be brutal or it may be gentle, but they will always tell you the truth and they will always have the best intentions regardless of how it comes out. And I think they're a good friend will always be intentional because sometimes brutal honesty is needed when the other person needs to wake the fuck up. And sometimes being gentle is needed. But regardless, I think a good friend will bring these things to light to try and help you like they are not going to enable you people pleasers are huge huge enablers they are trying to avoid conflict and they're trying to be liked so whatever you say is gonna go and they're gonna enable probably some of the worst behaviors in you and they're gonna be unreliable my best friend and i i think one of the main reasons the friendship has lasted so long despite you know, me being a people pleaser back in the day and being chaotic or whatever, is that there's always been an open line of communication. There has never been a fear of confrontation. And there's never been people pleasing within our friendship. So yeah, it's just been, it's been easy because even if he tells me something harsh, let's say, I mean, I can't really remember a time where it wasn't communicated correctly, but even if it hadn't, I always assume that he's acting out of good faith and he is, right? So there's just no hard feelings ever. Like the egos are not there. Like there's no ego at all. We just assume the best of each other and we consider each other's advice. We value each other's opinions and that's that. Simple as that. And even if he were wrong in giving me advice or telling me something about myself, which I think he has been a few times, I'm just like, bitch, what the fuck are you talking about? And then that's it. And then that's it. And then we have, we talk about it and that's it. Like, it's really that simple. And when you're with a people pleasing friend, there's just, there's so much ego management going on. Like you have to walk on eggshells and be super careful and it might not go the best way. Like, yeah. (sighs) Yeah. And also like the thing about people pleasing friends is that they are empathetic for everyone but you because they are trying to please the people that are not pleased already they neglect those that are actually offering a genuine connection so yeah it's just not good it's not good I myself and I'm not trying to demonize anybody like I myself am a recovering people pleaser so I know firsthand how difficult it is to grow out of this but to some extent we all have to try like we really have to give it a good good try and unlearn all of these toxic behaviors because you you sabotage your growth you sabotage genuine connections and yeah it just sucks bro like it just sucks I had a really hard time accepting that I was not empathetic at all that I was just trying to be of value to earn love like that is the only reason why I was so open 
to being of service for others, to abandoning myself to rescue the people that I thought needed rescuing. When, and then also, like, the thing with this is that I was just looking at the people that were toxic themselves and were never gonna, like, pour into me like I was pouring into them. So, yeah, like, I, I thought that was, for years, I thought that that was empathy. But it's not. It was just, it's just trauma, bitch. Like, I was just functioning out of trauma. True empathy, even though it can start with a feeling, with a passionate feeling, it doesn't have to. And true empathy has very little to no ego. And it has boundaries, it has discernment, and it has self-consideration. When you function out of true empathy, you put yourself first. And by putting yourself first, you avoid being selfish. I hope that that makes sense now. <laughs> but yes, that concludes today's episode. Thank you guys so much for listening. I know this was a little bit more of a serious one, but I felt like it was important to talk about because it's something that I've been thinking about for a while. You know, these are just thoughts in my head that float around because of the things that I've been through. But yeah, I mean, I thought that it would be useful to make an episode out of it. Thank you guys so much for listening. Follow me on social media at Amy Savalsa. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye.